Australian bushfires, the plastic crisis, species going extinct, dying coral reefs. All of this is shocking news about the current ecological crisis you've probably already heard. This is why, two and a half years ago, I decided to ban meat from my life. Now, you may think, what has meat to do with climate change, or why are you telling us about this? There are literally a thousand other subjects you could have chosen. Well, the reason why is because I think a part of what makes us human is our ability to have compassion. Compassion for ourselves, for the people around us, for people in general, but also compassion for nature. And we tend to forget this, this affinity with nature we have, especially if, like me, you grow up in a big city. And before I go uh, I, to explain what meat has to do with our environment, I would like to ask you, please just raise your hand, who of you eats meat daily? On a weekly basis? Sometimes? Are there any vegetarians <laughs> or vegans? Thank you. Now, there are three main consequences of our meat consumption. One, the huge amount of greenhouse gases they em it emits. Two, the crazy amount of water it requires. And three, the huge loss of land it causes. Now, let's look at these with more depth. The first negative impact of the meat industry is the many greenhouse gases it emits. Ruminants, such as cows, goats and sheep, produce methane when they digest food. And methane is a much stronger greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, but it lives for a shorter time in our atmosphere. And stored manure from these animals also emits methane and other gases. The transportation of food for these animals, of the livestock itself, and of the finished animal products also cause a lot of emissions. And deforestation, to make place for agricultural land, release many gases such as CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide from the soil. The second negative impact of the meat industry is the huge amount of water it requires. Agriculture is the largest user of water worldwide. And you can see behind me all the water we have available on Earth. And about 65% of our fresh water, which as you can see isn't a lot of our total amount of water, is used in agriculture. For example, to grow feed for the animals, but also as drinking water and to clean and process the meat. The production of one kilogram of animal protein requ requires approximately 100 times more water than vegetable protein. But as you can see, it differs greatly depending on the type of animal. For one kilogram of soybeans, 2,000 liters of water are used. And if you compare that to the 15,000 liters of water a kilogram of beef requires, you can see the enormous difference. But instead of eating this ourselves, the vegetables we feed to the animals, we feed it to them that we then eat again. Why waste so much food and so much water on these animals if we could just directly eat the vegetables ourselves? For example, 40% of all grain and 80% of all soy in the world is fed to livestock. Meat production is therefore not efficient. We could eat more and have more water as humans if we would eat less meat. Sadly enough, a big part of this relatively small amount of food is wasted. Annually, we throw away 1.3 billion tons of food worldwide. 1.3 billion tons of food. And this while a big part of the world still lives in hunger. So please be aware of your food and 
which resources it needs for you to be able to consume it. The third negative impact of the meat industry is the great loss of land and loss of tree it causes. All this land is used to let the animals graze on or to grow feed for these animals. About 50 billion farm animals are slaughtered every year. 50 billion farm animals. Just try to imagine all the space, all the food and all the water they need. And keep in mind that we, as humans, are only slowly approaching the 8 billion compared to the 50 billion animals we slaughter annually. This was also part of the reason for the 2019 Amazon fires, to make more space for agricultural land. It is estimated, estimated that 9,000 square kilometers of forest has been lost through last year's fires. This is very serious because the Amazon is our largest terrestrial carbon sink. This means that it absorbs carbon from the air and stores it. And as you know, trees can convert this CO2 into oxygen that we use to breathe and do all our bodily functions with. And another very grave consequence of this deforestation is that many animals lose their habitat, causing many deaths and making certain animal species more vulnerable to extinction. All of this has negative consequences. The ecological balance and biodiversity is in danger, and therefore the livelihoods of everyone on Earth are in danger. So these are the main reasons I decided to quit meat. As I've already said, this was two and a half years ago. But my vegetarianism journey began quite a long time before that, when my mom became vegetarian. And my parents are divorced, as probably uh, some other parents of you here are also. So I live one week with my dad and one week with my mom. And at my mom's place, no meat was and is served. And even at my dad's place, meat wasn't a part of every meal. So I could say I was eating vegetarian for about three quarters of the time. And because of my mom, I got well informed about this topic. It became the summer of 2017. I spent the month of July with my dad and the month of August with my mom. And when I came back from that month of vegetarian fat holiday, I thought, why would I go back to eating meat? Especially with everything I know about it and the possibility I have to easily take this out of my diet. So I didn't go back to eating it. Although I must confess, I've went on holiday to Africa last year and I tried one bite of alligator because I was curious. So you see, everyone is human. You don't need to be super strict on yourself, but you can choose the rules for yourself. And then school started again in September. And in ethics class, we watched the documentary Cowspiracy, which probably most of you have heard of or even watched yourselves. And if you did, you will probably remember the scene where the protagonist kills a duck to know what it feels like to kill an animal and eat it afterwards. And when I saw the reactions of my classmates on that scene, who were mostly meat eaters, our teacher asked us before we started watching it, the more activist side of me became alive because, you know, who am I to judge or blame people for choosing to eat meat? But I think that if you do have the choice and decide to eat it, you should be able to face the way it gets to your plate. That is when I started writing texts about the consequences of the meat industry, just like I explained to you before. And I started giving a more developed answer on the question, why don't you eat meat? It's so good. I could never give it up. And that's when I started to notice a change. Friends around me started calling themselves flexitarians. Parents of friends and teachers came up to me to ask for advice on how to substitute meat in their meals and started using corn. And my dad started making chili sin carne for everyone and not just for me. 
And just recently, a very good friend of mine who said she could never give up meat because it's the only thing she likes, told me it's been two months since she last ate meat, and now she is cooking almost every night and makes vegetarian dishes for her whole family. So these are all very positive changes, of course, and we must encourage each other to make these changes. But, of course, I don't expect you to just all turn vegan now, especially since I'm not one either. But I do think we should all start by becoming more aware of our food consumption. Look at, at it and thinking, where does it come from? Which resources are needed for us to be able to consume this? Start making small, gradual changes in your day-to-day -day life. For example, by challenging yourself to ban meat from your diet for one week. And if that goes well, try two weeks, one month, and so onwards. If I, a pretty insignificant 16-year-old, can spark this amount of change around me, everyone can. And I know that if we do this together, we can have a big impact. And remember, imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Thank you.